right, I'm Jason Rohde and uh, we are at Nomad in Montreal on a lovely Sunday afternoon and I can't tell you how much of a treat it is to be sitting with Bob Roth. So let's go really from uh, the most basic that we can imagine. What do you do? I uh, have been uh, teaching Transcendental Meditation for almost 50 years. And I head up the David Lynch Foundation, named after the great filmmaker David Lynch, which brings the evidence-based transcendental meditation to at-risk populations. So that can be kids in under-resourced schools, that can be veterans who suffer from post-traumatic stress, that can be women who are survivors of domestic violence, it can be inmates, it can be people living with HIV, AIDS, anyone who uh, is vulnerable to the sort of epidemic of stress that we live in. Um, and we so brought to now a million, a million kids around the world for free. Okay. Yeah, in the last 15 years. Around the world? Around the world. We're in 35 countries. Amazing. So, again, really basic. What is meditation? Well, the word meditation just means thinking. Now, there's lots of different meditation techniques, and it involves different types of thinking. So, you, you have meditation techniques, concentration forms of meditation, and that's like zazen or something, or vipassana. That's where you want to clear your mind of thoughts. Your thoughts are sort of the enemy, and you want to stop the mind from thinking. I use the analogy of an ocean. We have waves on the surface, and yet silence at its depth. And the mind is the same way. The mind is active thinking, thinking, all the gotta, gotta, they call it the monkey mind. I call it the gotta, gotta, gotta mind. But at its depth, the mind has a level right now which is already calm and settled and peaceful and alert. There are some types of meditation that want to create calm in the mind by clearing the mind of thoughts, that would, or mindfulness, observing thoughts. That would be like trying to stop every wave on the surface of the ocean. In transcendental meditation, or transcending, which means deep meditation, we learn how to access a level of your mind, my mind, Charlotte's mind, that's deep within us all effortlessly. And that's what transcendental, we transcend thinking. We go beyond thinking to the field of pure creativity, pure existence, pure being, our own quiet self. So... Big words. That's transcendental meditation. Yes. yes. Which is a technique. Yes. Um, how, do you, uh, how do you transcend? So in order to transcend, it's a really good question, to go from the surface active mind to this deep, deep, deepest level of our own creative self, you can't force your way there. You can't jam your way there. You can set up the conditions for your mind to settle down completely effortlessly on its own. Other forms of meditation, people say, I can't meditate, I could never clear my mind of thoughts. My mind is so busy, so active. And that's like struggle to stop waves, to stop thoughts. But in this, it's effortless. And it's effortless because, this is a really interesting point, it's the very nature of your mind, of anyone's mind, to seek greater happiness, to seek greater knowledge, to seek greater charm, fulfillment, pleasure. The mind is drawn to that. But usually we go out into the world to find, oh, that job, that relationship, that restaurant. That. And it lasts, but not forever. And that field within, so satisfying, that lies within. So in Transcendental Meditation, it's like teaching a child how to dive child standing by the side of the pool and you say, just lean over like that, just stand like that. Set up the conditions and then gravity takes over. So in Transcendental Meditation, we set up the conditions for your mind to be drawn inward on its own. And for that we use a mantra. A mantra is a word or a sound, a couple syllables that has no meaning, and we just learn how to effortlessly make use of the nature of the mind it wants to come go within. So we just learn. To we learn how to do it from a teacher. A teacher instructs us, takes about an hour a day over four days, and then we learn how to do it, and then you have it for the rest of your life. It's, um, every time I talk about it, it people uh, ask me questions about the mantra. Mm -hmm. Why can't you tell me the mantra? Mm -hmm. What's the mantra? What does it mean? Right. Uh, it's, and um, now that I have a mantra, I, I don't have uh, many more answers. It sounds like a kind of magic word of right. sorts. So can you explain sure. more what the mantra is? So in Transcendental Meditation, a mantra is a, a word or a sound, number one, that has no meaning. Because if it had a meaning, then you're stuck up on the surface trying to figure out what does that mean and your intellect kicks into gear and then your mind just gets busier and busier and busier. So number one, it has no meaning. Number two, it's a nice sound. 
it's a soft, it's a, it's a uh, life supporting, a good sound. It's not something that your teacher makes up. This me these mantras are over 5,000 years old. So this is a meditation that's been used for thousands of years. So you have a mantra that has no meaning. You have a sound that's a positive sound. And then you're taught how to use it properly. The interesting thing is a lot of times people th think of the mantra like an aspirin. Oh, just give me your, give me your mantra and then I'll, I'll, and I'll just repeat it. Like, give me the, I have a headache, give me that pill. But that's not what the mantra is used for in Transcendental Meditation. In TM, it's a vehicle that takes the active, agitated thinking mind and actually lets the mind transcend. Transcend is a big word, which just means settle, go beyond. The noisy, active, agitated, gotta, gotta, to just quieter levels, quieter levels, quieter levels, and then go beyond even that deepest level to your own quiet self. Those are big words, fancy words. Transcend, mm. go beyond, pure consciousness. And a, a good skeptical mind would say, whoa, wait a minute, you know, I mean, says who? It's just, is that just fanciful, is it like sales words, is it like branding? And actually, it's a very good question because we know something significant happens during transcendental meditation because we know what happens in the brain and the body. The mind and body are not just connected, they're one. So if you're anxious in your mind about something, what does your body feel like? If you're exhausted in your body, fall asleep. So as the mind, active mind settles down effortlessly, just as drawn inward, huge, profound, healthy things are taking place in your brain and body. Your body gains a state of rest deeper in many regards than the deepest part of deep sleep. And there's a hormone, stress hormone, called cortisol, which is secreted by the um, adrenal glands when we're anxious. If you get a good night's sleep, cortisol levels drop 10%. In 20 minutes of transcendental meditation, they drop 40%. Nothing else does that. It wakes up the creative network in the brain. It has a whole constellation of changes that say, Jason, something significant is happening. How do I know that I'm transcending? Mm. What does it feel like? You know how the, the, um, sometimes people say, well, you know, what do you mean going from an active thinking mind to quiet mind? And I like to use an example. You say, you're at a playground and you see, oh, that little kid is a hothead. That little kid is boiling over with rage and his body's tense. And you see another kid, you say, that, that kid is cool, calm, and collected. We have that line, cooler minds will prevail. And there's like an ease. So the mind can be heated. And then there's areas of the mind that are cooler, calmer. And when the mind is heated, the body's tense. When the mind is cooler, the body's deeply relaxed. So the process of transcendental meditation, why we use a mantra. You just close your eyes and try to clear your mind of thoughts. You can't do it. Your mind wants to, do, wants to think. So in TM, we give the mind something to think because it wants it. But it's not rigid, it's not meaningful, it's just fluid, it's just comfortable, it's easy. And so the mind can think, but sort of relax. And we know we're meditating correctly, transcending, first and foremost, because it's very relaxing. Do you find that when you meditate? Yes. Because the heated mind settles down to these cooler levels and the body gains deep rest. And so one of the first things I notice and what people notice is not just kind of relaxing, but profoundly relaxing. And it's an interesting thing, though, because, again, people say, well, you know, transcendental meditation, that transcendental sounds kind of strange, you know. Like, and then they go, well, it's done for 20 minutes. And they say, well, how do you know when your 20 minutes are up? And I say, look at your watch. I mean, you're not going anywhere. You're just settling down to the quieter level. So you'll notice it physically profoundly relaxing, and mentally it, it can be, it, as you, you settle down, you come up, it's, it's, a, it's a, a lot going on mentally, which doesn't matter because there's a lot going on in our life, but as the mind settles down, you really notice it in your body. Do you feel a disconnection to your thoughts uh, if you are uh, transcending? It doesn't mean you're not thinking anymore, no. but I, I, uh, have you seen the movie Get Out? No. No? There's a scene in it where the main character, he gets hypnotized and he falls backwards into this abyss and he looks at life through a screen that goes away from him. Of course, this is very scary for the character, but um, although visually it's not what I experience, I do feel this sense of um, 
of uh, looking at things f with a certain perspective. Like, um, there's still uh, activity going on, but I'm not involved in it. I mean, activity going on in my mind, but I'm not involved in it. I'm, I'm simply observing. Um, is, is that... That's a beautiful description. Well, I, I'm not yeah. sure if... Yeah, no, uh, again, it, you never know uh, no. if you're doing it correctly. Is it relaxing when you're meditating? Completely. Then that's your sign. Because mentally, am I thinking up... First of all, we're just thinking. So am I thinking thoughts here? I tell people thoughts are not the bad guy. Lots of times when people learn Transcendental Meditation, they'll say, well, I had a lot of thoughts. Well, I'll say, was your body rela very relaxed? Well, hello, we're alive. We have a lot going on in our lives. We should be thinking. It's fine to think thoughts. Thoughts are an expression of our life. Am I thinking them up here where I'm tense and angry and I can't see anything, a very narrow, uh, or am I thinking them down here where the mind is broader comprehension? more settled, and then the thoughts aren't so gripping. Yeah, and we have that experience anyway. If you're really angry about something, and, or you have a child who's really angry, and you say, you know, go over there, have a time out, or get a good night's sleep. Next morning you wake up, same situation, but you have a bigger picture. So it's nothing fanciful. It's just to a more profound degree. And so that example, it's not a scary experience. It's just me experiencing my quiet self. I can experience my active self, and I can experience... The ocean is waves and silence. And it's not either or, it's both. And so in Transcendental Meditation, we experience that inner equanimity, that inner silence, and we experience dynamism. And artists and athletes talk about the zone. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're just, it's a flow. You're not straining. The athlete who just, you know, talk basketball right now, just, just in a flow. As soon as they start straining, it all falls apart. So it's a natural experience. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it for everyone? So I've been teaching it for <laughs> 47 years now, uh, meditating for 50 years, teaching for 47 years, and I've taught thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and I've taught skeptics, and I've taught fundamentalist Christians and fundamentalist Muslims and Orthodox Jews and atheists and I've taught everybody and everyone the mind is seeking happiness in everyone inside everyone is this field of peace calm quiet and everyone can learn how to give the attention of the mind in inward direction and effortlessly settle down I believe well it's everyone's birthright it's not and it's not in a oh well, you, you're, into med you're into meditation. You know, you're that meditation type. I run a foundation and I've taught thousands of inner city school kids to meditate, but along the way sometimes I teach well-known people who fortunately are good people. So I went to um, Tom Hanks's house. I was, he invited me to come over to his house. He had, was having trouble with some health issues. And um, I said, fine, I'm free. And I went over to his house and I was just dressed like this. And he opened the door and he was shocked like visibly shocked. He said, well, I expected you to come wearing yoga pants and have a man bun. And I said, well, if your cardiologist was coming to your house, you wouldn't think that. M meditation has gotten this branding. Oh, it's weird. It's a sect. It's, it's a religion. And that's very unfortunate because it's properly under understood in practice. It's none of those things. It's every human being's birthright. Well, you speak of 5,000 years I've tried to conceive of that, you know, something being passed on for 5,000 years, and, and I can't. You know, I can only go like 2,000 years. Yeah. How has it been passed on? Uh, in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, it says, be still and know that I am God. So that's 5,000 years old. This is nothing new. The ability to transcend, the ability to access your own si inner silence has been around since times immemorial. And um, I believe, and it's my experience, that meditation itself has nothing to do with religion. It can be at the basis of religion, just like eating up properly can be at the basis of religion and being healthy and being what well, cleanliness is next to all those things, but in and of itself, absolutely nothing to do with religion. And it's been passed on in Transcendental Meditation. It's never been, Jason, never been taught out of a book, Today, there's all these apps. It's always been human to human, one to one, passed on from teacher to student. And I like to say, 
yeah, internet can do some stuff, but you can't raise your children digitally. <laughs> you know, you do need to spend time with your child to raise them. And to learn how to transcend, to turn your attention within, it, you, it needs that hour a day for four days. And then you've, as you've experienced, then you've got it. But it's been passed the same way. The, how you learned it from Eric, great TM teacher, is how it's been taught for thousands of years. To get uh, practical, it costs something to learn it. Mm -hmm. um, that's, um, that's a barrier for a lot of people. So I understand that's in big part, in great part, the, the role of the foundation is uh, to be able to share this uh, with some people that might not be able to afford it. It's the goal of the, of the TM organization in Canada and around the world that there should be no obstacle for anyone learning to meditate that it should be available in businesses as part of an employee assistant program. It should, be, it should be available in hospitals for people who are recovering from some ailment or some, some accident. It should be available in schools, just like you have physical education. It should be everywhere. There's a, a period of transition to get to that point. And the transition has been, okay, now we have TM, tra teachers of transcendental meditation who need a livelihood. This is not some quick fix meditation. Oh, you go in and take a few breaths or you watch something on TV or you listen to something on an internet. Well, that's free. Why can't TM be free? Well, that technique is free. If you just want to learn how to take a few deep breaths or a guided meditation about your, you know, a butterfly landing on a flower or something, that's fine. But to learn how to transcend and to have the support as you have for the rest of your life you have access to a teacher for your whole life. For the people who can't afford it, then we have the David Lynch Foundation and we have scholarships. And the David Lynch Foundation, as I said earlier on, um, works to raise the money to provide scholarships now for a million kids who live in, in poverty or really at, at risk. So that's two different things. But to get to this point where it's available to everyone, all that that required, and that's what we're focused on now, is to do the high-level research, the large-scale studies, a thousand people with high blood pressure, a thousand people with acute anxiety, trade anxiety, a thousand people with insomnia or a substance use disorder. The same way you would take a medicine and you'd subject th that medicine to studies so that your national health care will reimburse for it, so that's what we're doing now with Transcendental Meditation. And once we have those studies, then TM will be available to everyone at no cost, as it should be. In, in America, we have large companies. You can learn to meditate on company time. You can meditate. They have meditation rooms in the company. And it's paid for by the company. That's our goal. I, I do feel it, it, from my own experience, that it's good for everything. And that's why I now find myself talking so much about it yeah. that... Uh, you know, some loved ones are, are tired of, uh, of hearing me. Some but loved I, ones? <laughs> <laughs> but really, it's, uh, I feel it, it, it's, it is good for everything, much like sleep is good for everything, much like eating well is good for everything, exercise is good for everything. We're asking sleep, the state of sleep, to get rid of the stresses and tensions and anxieties and of just life. I mean, you know, we're not traumatized, particularly like what they have in Fallujah or something, but life has its traumas, its stresses. From exercise and eating properly is from the neck down. I'm going to take care of my health, my stress from the neck down. Well, we have this three pound organ here that really runs a lot of the show. And we don't think it's strange to exercise, to do sit ups or pull ups or whatever. And the same will be with meditation. What TM does is it establishes connections or communication between all the different parts of the brain. Everything good about the brain depends upon its communication. And stress rips apart that communication. Just like everything good about a relationship depends upon communication. Everything good about a company depends upon communication. A country, same within the brain. And so what all the TM does is it allows all the different parts of the brain to connect together. And there's something called neuroplasticity. When the neurons in the brain fire together during meditation, they wire together out of meditation. So all this healthy brain functioning lasts afterwards. And that's why we're happier, we're more focused, we're more creative in life. And that's why we're meditating. We're not meditating, oh, I'm going to escape for 10 minutes or 20 minutes and hide from everybody. 
No, it's a few minutes and then we come back out and we have much more to give to the people we love. You can do it anywhere because all you're doing is allowing your, you're not trying to push out thoughts or noise, as you know, you're just accessing areas of the mind that are inherently cooler and calmer. So a child from about the age of four years to 10 or 11 years old, they, get, they don't sit to meditate. They're too restless at that point. But they get a mantra and they can use the mantra while walking or drawing, some quiet activity, and they do it twice a day, five minutes or something. From about the age of 10 or 11 years and up, a child to adult has the sitting technique. Now, a lot of families are coming to learn to meditate, and that's a healthy trend. So with your kids, they, they can learn too, they love it. There's, there's no, if you think, my kid is all over the place, I have, my child has ADD, I can't, can't, or I have ADD, this transcendental meditation is a dream come true for an ADD mind. Because as you know, we don't control the mind. We just give it a direction inward, and on its own it gets drawn inward. What's in great part sold me uh, to TM was the many successful, very successful people, many of whom I admired already, that I've seen you interview who practice TM. And, you know, people like uh, Katy Perry that my daughter introduced me to, um, you know, once you start learning about who this person is and how hard she's working, you say, okay, this is the kind of tool that people like that need in order to, to, to just uh, survive um, w what's asked of them. Same thing with, uh, with Jerry Seinfeld, of course, I love that story that he tells that instead of having lunch, he would be uh, doing TM. Uh, he, he found it more useful than a, than a hearty meal. Some of the people that you've taught that are dealing with the most stress, um, what kind of changes have you seen in them? And, um, and have, has anyone given up on it? Has anyone kind of uh, put it aside after some time just because they don't have time or something like this or skip too, too many days? and uh, that you've run into them a couple of years later and that they've gone on with this successful life without TM once they've learned it. I know it's a bit of, of a... No, 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 it's a wonderful... All your questions are wonderful. Um, very thought-provoking. I'm going to uh, preface it by saying that you brought up Katy Perry. So Katy Perry's been meditating now eight years, and I saw her on a tour, and... Um, she had, us, she had me teach her whole team of dancers and musicians. And this is an extraordinary woman who basically built up her career on her own from like nothing to what she has. She's an amazing businesswoman, very kind heart, big supporter of the David Lynch Foundation. Um, and I was talking to her and she was, ex one night she was exhausted. It was after a show. And she said, I'm so tired. It was at Newark. She just had performed between for 16,000 people. And I said, um, she said, I'm really tired. And I said, what show is this? She said, number 29. And I said, how many more do you have? And she said, 110. <laughs> she had, this is a 140-show know, tour. And, and she said she never could do it without TM. Because as exhausted as she was at that moment, when she closes her eyes, for, as you know, for 20 minutes, and her body just, she says, TM is a million times easier than getting a good night's sleep. It just it's so easy. She said the body gets this deep rest. It throws off the stress and fatigue. And it's not just a relaxation technique. Very energizing. You, you feel like a new jump start to the day. And she told me something. She said, you know, getting to the top was hard. But staying at the top is a hundred times harder. Because it requires constant creativity, constant innovation. And again, Transcendental meditation is not just a technique for just relaxation. There's actually networks within the brain. There's two parts of the brain that are involved in the creative process. One is called the attention network, and that's your ability to focus. And the other part of the brain is called, well, they used to say, well, what, all right, what is the brain doing when it's not working hard and concentrating? And What does the brain default to? So what the resting brain. So what does it default to? Sort of diminishing it. What's it like? And they, so they called it the default mode network. Which is, and it was sort of a put down. Oh, that's the wandering mind, brain. That's the sort of wandering mind. And I have a new name for it, Jason. It's called the imagination network. Mm. 
That's the part of the brain where deep, innovative ideas come from. That's the part of the brain, non-linear, where you go, oh my God, there's a problem with five different people in my office. Oh, I can solve it like this, because it's not like that. And what they find, the most creative people have, they can focus and have that imagination network lively. And that's what Transcendental Meditation does. And so you have people like Paul McCartney or Jerry Seinfeld or Howard Stern or Hugh Jackman, people you've known, or Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, who famously meditate, and they get the same benefits that that inner city school kid does, or that single mom who you know, is raising two children on her own. She has to solve problems, she has to be creative. Every single day uses the same part of the brain that Jerry Seinfeld uses to solve that problem or create a solution. And I think that's the beauty of Transcendental Meditation, because it just actualizes who we are anyway. What if I don't have 40 minutes a day? Then you do the very best you can. Mm. It's not something to get, you know. I, I tell people, there's 1,400. People say, well, I don't have time. And mm. I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> 1,440 minutes in a day. We're talking 20 minutes. You get up 20 minutes earlier before the kids get up. And it's better than sleep anyway. It's not like you're getting up and exercising, but you need sleep. It's better than sleep anyway. So you do it for 20 minutes then. And then what I do is I look at my calendar the night before and I say, where am I going to find 20 minutes in the afternoon? And, you know, I, I like to say, what if your best friend who you hadn't seen in 20 years is coming to see you? You'd make time to see your best friend for 20 minutes. Mm. Okay, well, who's your bestest friend? <laughs> your own quiet self. And so you, you look the evening before and you say, oh, here, at 3 o'clock I can get in 20 minutes. Or at 6 o'clock I can do that. Or it's going to be crazy. I might not be able to do it till after dinner, but I'll eat a lighter dinner because it's easier to meditate. And you miss it, you miss it, and you go on. But it, you should set the bar high for yourself. You should set the bar high. You deserve 40 minutes for profound self-care. Who benefits the most? You do, but who benefits right after that? The person you love most, the people you love most, your work. You bring your best self to everything, and that is... What a way to live a life. Bob Roth, thank you so much for everything that you do and for this Thank talk. you. I really thank enjoyed it. Thank you yeah. for I was told you were going to ask some great questions, and you <laughs> asked great questions. I yeah. tried to keep it simple. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're not doing TM yet, you should be. So, thanks. Thank you.